Hey. We need to give a lot of prefacing. This is going to be a preface heavy video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we have been hardcore subscribers to the WWE Network since 2014. Yeah. Really? Wow, that's crazy. Well, you've watched the wrestling all your life, haven't well, you? Well, yeah, we... but like the network. But the network the $10 itself. a month. Yeah. Which, to be fair, we haven't got to spare. Yeah. So it's saying something that we've been doing it for five years now. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say that that was like our once a month act like idiots day. Yeah. Oh, look at her little tongue. Yeah. Um, She's hot. It's boiling. Because we would get pizza and we'd get dressed up and watch wrestling. Yeah. We and even went to a... Uh, yeah, we went to Smackdown. Smackdown. Yeah. That was amazing. That was. Do you want me? Okay. But last night's pay per view, the Hell in the Cell, that I don't even know if we haven't talked because I left this morning. Mm. So you know how we thought it was a disqualification? Yeah. Like he called for the bell? Yeah. It actually wasn't a disqualification. They put ref stoppage which means that seth was beating bray up so bad that the ref had to call it so not only does it not give bray the disqualification win if that was like the bright side of that it means seth is such a bad a that he just worked him beyond recognition but on top of that, he didn't sell any of his finishes, so all of his movesets, Seth's movesets, crap. Yeah. The whole thing was just, it this was is, awful. This is Hell in a Cell, where mankind fell through the roof and a tooth was sticking through his lip. Nose. Nose. Lip, like, yeah. It was, it was gross. Yeah. Seriously, his tooth was I'll show like it to sticking you. It's through. It like, was that bad. Covered in pin tacks. Well, there's also like, a Hell in a Cell match where Triple H hits Vince over the back of the head with a sledgehammer, swung full. What about full. Batista as well? He well, he hit, Bat he hit Batista with the sledgehammer, but he broke the sledgehammer over Vince McMahon's head. No stoppage. No. But Seth is so badass. I mean, I love Seth Rollins, don't get me wrong. I love him. But this made but you this not like, like him. Yeah, it was stupid because The Fiend has been such an awesome build-up and everyone was excited about it. And there's such a lot of hard work gone into building that character up just to be like... And this not. was only the second actual match for The Fiend. Yeah. So, Which is disgusting. And also, uh, that's not the worst thing, to be honest. This is like the icing on the cake because the Brock Lesnar debacle. Turning up when he feels like it and getting all the glory for everything when it's totally unjustified. It started with the um, money in the bank. That's when it really started pissing me off. Like, it's pissing me off I was off pissed off before then. then. Yeah, me too, but that's but when that I was, was like... Because like, oh, this... he, he wasn't even in the match. No. So how does he just show up? He wasn't even climb the ladder. He get wasn't the briefcase. even on the show. Yeah. And he just turns up, climbs the ladder, gets the briefcase. So he's already got a title. Um, Which challenge. he doesn't need because he doesn't need it because that's all. He whenever does anyway. he shows up, he gets a title shot. Now here's the thing about Brock. Brock's awful. His moves suck. He shows up for five minute matches. We all know he gets paid millions upon millions of dollars to be on camera for like maybe 10 or 15 minutes all together. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. And he really doesn't re like have a whole lot of respect for the business. No, it's just, it's just laughing at people who are working their asses off every yeah. day to do it. It's disgusting. But the other thing is, is that because WWE has been getting all of this talent and signing everyone to contracts and all this stuff, when you have a black hole like Brock Lesnar, that means 
you're not going to have as many title defenses. Like, I mean, he did what? Like, that one whole year he was champ, he had like three matches. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Over an, a year. It puts everything in a stasis. And so all these guys that could have been pushed up, like Braun, Strowman. Yeah. He should have had the belt a long time ago. But um, then we had to also watch this four-year debacle of WWE wanting to put the title on Roman Reigns, but couldn't because every time they wanted to, Brock wanted to come back. And Vince loves Brock. So Brock gets to do whatever Brock wants. But then Vince still has a hard-on for getting Roman Reigns over. No, this is a build-up for why it's pissed It's off. just, it's... Oh. And so, two pay-per-views ago, we said, if Brock shows up, we're canceling the network. We did, yeah. And then he didn't, right? Yeah, he didn't show up, so we were like... So we are like, it. yeah, because we really thought... And then it was, if Brock wins, if Brock beats Seth at SummerSlam, we were going to cancel the subscription. Yeah. But he didn't. But he, he lost, just so he could show up and beat Kofi... In nine seconds. Kofi, who... You see, that's another thing. (laughs) Kofi's been the champ for, what? Since WrestleMania. Yeah. And it's been a huge, big deal. He's had all these huge matches where he's had to try and defeat, you know... Well, to be fair, his only real matches have been against Dolph and Randy. Yeah. It's not like he had, like... No, I know, but it's been like a huge, like, long thing, yeah. you know, and a huge build for everybody, and, you know, kids love him, and all this kind of stuff, but to have Brock just turn up and defeat him in nine seconds, that's just humiliating, it's it's just undermining the entire work that he's put in. And the whole thing there. is, since Brock doesn't do the freaking F5 in a UFC fight, yeah. why should we think it's a big deal in a wrestling match? It's the stupidest finisher in the world, and it somehow manages to completely incapacitate everybody. But, so now, we're getting Cain Velasquez, the guy who beat Brock Lesnar for the UFC championship, coming after him. And that match does not need a title, because that's a total blood feud. That makes sense. But no, they had to rip the belt off of Kofi, who I think shouldn't have had the belt in the first place. That's a whole other story. That's just my fantasy booking fun stuff. But this whole match that they're having, like, didn't need to happen with a title. That could have been, but I'm imagining Brock would have just said, yeah, but I want the title. Yeah, he's like, I like accessories. So everybody will be like, okay, and just done it. And it's just undermined everything that... Other people in the company have to know, though, that A, a majority of the fan base do not like Brock. But I know that Fox thinks Brock would bring Normies over to watch it on TV. Because he's a name outside no. of wrestling. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but he doesn't have to have the title to do that. No, he doesn't. But he wants the title, yeah. I'm assuming. So that's it. So everyone just bows down to it. And it just completely makes a mockery of all the other stuff that has been... All the other hard work that has been put in towards all the other shows beforehand. It's just like, it just wipes it off. It's clean. insulting. It is insulting and it's humiliating, I think, for the people who are working their ass off every week. And for the fans, because nobody gives a crap. We're all like bored with it. And we and all so, think he's a. Like, I don't mind watching him if he was, you know, just doing what everybody else Every is once doing. in a while, he'll have like a really good match. Like the match That's he had with Daniel said, Bryan. Yeah. Like, when he wants to have a good match. He has a good match. But it's the fact it's all on his terms by the by the feel of it. And it's just wow. the fans, everybody that's interested in it, all the people who are actually working hard at what they're trying to do every week is all undermined by somebody who comes in and says, I want this, that, that, that. Okay, you've got it. It's just like, a, it's, it's a mockery of the whole thing, I think. I'm sick of it. And so just so you know, this picture up here, this is um, The Fiend. And then him without his mask on when he's just Bray Wyatt. So, the thing is, is that... We've always loved Bray Wyatt. Yeah. When he was the... um, With the Wyatt family. Wyatt family and all the Firefly stuff and things. But, like, we've got t-shirts. Yeah. Like, we really enjoyed his character. Yeah. Masks and a little lantern. Yeah. We had everything. We had everything. But here's the thing. Like, 
this whole character has been building up since WrestleMania, which was the first week of April. Yeah. Okay. Um, there were all these weird little skits. Then they started doing this. Basically, his character now is he's a demented children's show presenter. It sounds really stupid when I say it out loud. <laughs> but the thing is, it's really good. It's and just, it's he has invented. like he has puppets of all of the former personas of his character. Yeah. And he even has a, like a devil Vince. Which just lantern. boggles my mind. His lantern is his and lantern. his lantern's his own severed head. And they're, they've been giving him so much freedom to Which be able Tom to do Savini, what he wants. Which Tom by the way. Tom Savini, Friday the 13th, um, special effects, Day at George Romero's, um, Dawn and uh, Day machine. of the Dead. Sex Machine in... Um, From Death Yeah. This is like a legend of special effects. And yeah, he's done... I think he's overrated. Uh, well, maybe he is, but we, he's We big. argue about this all but the time. But he's a huge... Yeah, he's a big name. Name. <laughs> and he's done the um hit the mask which you can see there his company designed it and the severed head and things so you can see why we would like it it's like a big change to the normal like wrestling for me is just a bit of fun it's yeah. like entertainment i like being entertained i love a good heel I love people coming out. Uh, it's like twizzling it's your a, mustache. A little more violent than Coronation Street. Yes. Yeah. I like the twizzling the mustache, the, you know, hiding behind the cape, all that ridiculous over-the-top hammy heel stuff. And I like ridiculous gimmick wrestlers. That's always been my thing since I was a kid. But more than anything, I just love good storytelling. And so when a story there is was told so little well... so of this lately. Yeah. And it's like whatever good storytelling is going on, comes to an abrupt stop if Brock Lesnar shows up yeah, and decides he needs some clean. money. Um, and with Bray, the fiend, it's so funny because it keeps like jerking the screen and I think it's like the thing because that's what he does. Yeah. Um, but no, it's just everything's crap. Um, he had one match at SummerSlam against Finn Balor and that's the only thing he's done. And because he's like the hottest thing in wrestling right now, for some stupid reason, they booked him in a championship match against a guy that they didn't want to lose the belt. So if you're going to book a match where you don't want this guy to lose and you don't want this guy to win, but you know the crowd's really behind it, what that does is it automatically takes your baby face, which is your good guy, and turns him into a villain because nobody wants him to win. So when he's making his big comeback, instead of the fans cheering for it, they're going to be booing him. And the thing that makes this worse, I think more than anything, is that they were in a match that was called the Hell in the Cell. Which means you are trapped in this cage that has a roof on it. And nobody comes out until someone wins. It's like on The Office. Cage fight. Like... You go in, no one comes out until it's over. Like, it's a cage fight. Yeah. You know, like, there's no rules, there's no disqualifications, it's there's no nothing. That's the whole point, there's no rules, no disqualifications. And last year, they botched the Hell in the Cell match With by Brock. having Brock Lesnar come in and beat up Roman and Braun Strowman to we'll make it a, a no contest. Which, it wouldn't matter because it's a Hell in the Cell match and there's no rules. So why is a ref involved at all? I don't get it. So then this happened. Um, basically, Seth tried to do his finishers on him. And Nothing over and 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 over. And so Seth buried him under a ladder, a chair, a toolbox, another chair. And then smashed it with a sledgehammer. And the ref's like, Seth, don't do this. This isn't you. Da, 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 da. Why the ref is getting involved in this, I have no idea. And then Seth is like, fuck it. And then he smashes it. He did the whole, like, do I do this? Yeah. Oh, God, like wrestling with his conscious. And then, uh, conscious. Which is and then fine, he, yeah, if that's is... the story they want to tell. Yeah. But then the ref goes, ring the bell, ring the bell. Ding, ding, ding. We got to get medics in here for the fiend. We got to, and then guess what? He's not supposed to be real anyway. He's not supposed yeah. to be a real human. And then the fiend was faking it and he jumped up and attacked Seth 
And every, the whole crowd at this point are, ch are chanting, restart, restart the match. match. Restart like, match. <clears throat> no. no. No, this was like just brilliant whatever. It, it's just... So the whole ups, the upshot of this whole push that's been six years in the making, by the way, Bray Wyatt has been hinting at this character for six years. Yeah. Which no one realised... It might have been a little bit longer. Probably longer, yeah. But it's been going on, and this has been this huge build-up of this character that everyone was excited about because it was, like, something refreshing and new, and everybody was, is so sick of everything at the minute and the bull crap that keeps happening that they were, like, excited. Their hopes were up. This was going to be a turnaround. What happened? Not only did he not win the belt... But, well... People were booing both of them by the end of the match. Like, the, the point is, I wouldn't have minded if he didn't win the belt, if that's, if the character... If it was, was on not his even, terms. If it was on his terms, he wasn't even interested in winning the belt. He just wanted to beat the crap out of him because he's a badass. He's evil. But then the thing is, the question is, why didn't they just book a Hell in the Cell match between the two of them that was a non-title match because The Fiend doesn't care about belts? Well, because like that took me like seriously four seconds to explain. Yeah. Like they could have no, done they that. Couldn't, they could have even done. They could have even done a title match, but with him just like saying at the end, like or just like not interested, just playing it out somehow. So he's like, I don't care if I get the belt. Yeah. You know what and I mean? just play that out and to the crowd. Just be that character that he was just there purely to enjoy beating the crap out of Seth. Yeah. And Didn't if he beat the that. crap out of Seth and then beat the crap out of the ref, and then. Like, just played it up to the crowd and just beat the crap out of everybody, everyone would everyone have been happy. Everyone would have been absolutely ecstatic about it. But actually, it just made Seth look better and it made him look vulnerable. Wrestle Talk actually said if they would have went that way, it would have devalued the championship. Because the belt should be the most important thing in the company to everyone who's a part of the company. I don't and think that works with somebody who isn't supposed, supposed to, be, to be human. Yeah, I get that. Like, I don't think... I think, yes, in any other case, but this is somebody who's been played up to be yeah. psychotic. So anyway, so after this goes off the air, I was super pissed off because that's two years in a row. They took a match with no rules and then put rules on it at the very end just to get out of a finish that they didn't want to have to... I just get. don't understand any point of it, apart from the fact that they didn't want to take the title off Seth, but they could have done that so many better ways. So many other ways that would have pleased the crowd. Somebody said online, I want to know what the other 99 worse ideas were I that know. were pitched that made Vince go, oh wait, this is the one that's going to... This is gonna... the one that should work. <sighs> so... I honestly don't know what's going on in, in anyone's head anymore. For him, to, for him to think that this is, especially with the Fox deal and all this huge like money exchanging hands that's going on at the minute, all these deals, they can't afford to do this, I don't think. The only other thing I can see is that Bray is going to SmackDown, which is on Fox. And if he's going to Fox, then he can't take Raw's championship with him. I mean, he could. And then drop it or something like that. There's a million ways you could have got yeah, around this. He could have gone to SmackDown with the same theory that he's like he doesn't want the belt he's not interested he's just beating the crap out of people that would have still been yeah amazing. but that devalues the title like doing it like that devalues the title i think i agree with that luke dude on that i, I tweeted last night oh, God. from my secret wrestling account well that's one good thing since it? wwe obviously it doesn't care what fans think Maybe we should go tell their new mommy. So I added Fox and at Fox Sports. And I said, hey, Fox execs, take a look at hashtag WWE HIAC and see how your billion dollar baby pissed off all their fans tonight. No response. Because I anybody. honestly feel like, huh? From anybody. I haven't looked. But is I just, I feel like... AEW as well, who is the challenging company at the minute, they have a television deal now as well. They can't afford to 
to be messing up like but this. But I feel I like don't. what Vince thinks is that AEW is going up against their developmental brand. So they're not competition. AEW looks at WWE and says, we're not in competition because until they put out a good product, we're not competing. Which is kind of ballsy to say. Because here's the thing. I don't like AEW. Like, I like Cody and um, Jericho and a few other guys on their roster, but I really just don't like AEW. I haven't been wowed yet. I so, haven't, but I, I'm hopeful. Oh, and MJF. Yeah, we, we I, I'm hopeful like that they have, like, the potential and the right thought process behind things. Well, they need to stop signing every crap indie wrestler in the planet. Yeah. Like, no offense to indie wrestlers out there. There's a bunch of good ones. But the sign train needs to stop. Well, I think it's difficult when you first start out because you need to get people on the roster to get people to watch, you know what I mean? But they maybe should have done that before. Well, I also feel like if you have a smaller roster, you could build better story. Yeah. Um, so that's a problem I have. I like smaller rosters with better storytelling. But anyway, so obviously WWE does not fall into that. Um, so last night after this, I was watching just a bunch of reaction videos and a bunch of people, like, like big wrestling reporters and stuff like that. I guess Brian Alvarez, before Hell in the Cell even aired, went on a 10-minute rant about why Bray vs. Seth is a stupid idea and how they could fuck the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. um, I need to go back and watch that and see yeah. how prophetic that was. But um, there was just... Like, all of these, like, people booing, um, staying in the arena after the lights went on, chanting for a refund, chanting AEW, and I don't care about the AEW stuff. I'm not, I'm not, because a lot of people right now are going, I want to either give WWE my money, or I want to give AEW my money, but I don't want to pay for both, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, me... I just want WWE to be good. Like, that's all I'm asking. Like, I, I'm not saying I'm going to go to AEW. I'm, I'm going to start watching AEW. Because I'm probably not going to watch AEW. I'll probably just watch YouTube highlights of um, Raw and SmackDown. But I'm not going to bother with this shit anymore. No, I, I, like, it breaks my heart because I love Dolph. And I, yeah. want, I enjoy watching the whole... Thing. But at the minute, I'm finding it like yesterday. I wasn't interested in the whole thing. I, I couldn't cared less. Yeah, it was very. Uh, and I haven't felt like that. I don't know if that's just me at the minute or whatever. But I'm just sick of it. It's it's got like a negative feeling about it at the minute. There's no. It's just silly. It looks like silliness. With well, I feel like too the whole thing that was built. This whole pay per view was built on Bray versus Seth. Yeah. Like, I don't really feel like, like it had I... much else. I mean, you had the Roman, um, Harper and Rowan yeah, and Daniel Bryan. That and that up. thing's been kind of going on. But you also had Becky and Sasha, which we had last month. Charlotte and Bailey, which we had last month. And um, I think those were the only actual matches that Dolph were announced wasn't even on. Why before. That wasn't on? Well, you know, Ali needed to. Have a yeah, why, match why with Randy Dolph Orton. On, Who knows? Like, I don't understand it. It's just, like, stupid and, like, the whole feeling. But the Revival, they weren't on. They are no. the other champs. It's just, like, doesn't make sense. None of it does. It's like, they're just... I think Shinsuke it's... wasn't on. No. He's got the belt. I think it's, like, the fact that they've got so much, like, they're so worried about making money with Fox and these other deals, that they just don't care about anything else at the minute. It's like, it's just like drag, like they drag the rock and... They drag the, drag the rock out from under a stone. No, I don't mean that, but back to, like, that, you know, we'll get the rock. That'll make people watch. And I'm sure it He's, did. I'm Having sure it the did, rock but and not Cain on Velasquez every week. and Brock, I know. That's the whole, They're having like, to drag it's outside. cheap pop... Like, yeah. one-time things. Steve Austin to the, like, you know what I mean? Well, Steve Austin's been on TV, like, twice this year, so. 
But that's what I'm saying though, they're dragging these big stars so everyone's like, ooh, this is going to be amazing, we'll watch this. But that's not a true representation of what is actually going on. The actual shows themselves are bad. And the problem that WWE is going to find himself in is that none of their current roster have the same appeal as Legends from 20 years ago deal. Mm -mm. And the funny thing is, in the 90s, you could wheel out any Legend from 20 years ago. 20 years prior to that. And no one really would have given a shit. Yeah. Like, it would have been, oh, cool, there's a old man Withers or something. You know, like, it. it's... The fact that no one on their current roster can get a pop like Rock or Austin or even Hogan or Ric Flair or um, Bret Hart... Or Shawn Michaels. Now, yeah, like, these are, like, legendary people and all that stuff. But you don't have anybody who... Because they're not focused on building people now. They're focused on making money now. Mm-hmm. There's, like, no long-term booking. Dude, we are, like... We've gone a very long time. And yeah, the whole point just... of this... Go ahead. No, nothing. It's just... it's. I know most people watching this are not going to be in the slightest bit interested, but it's like being very, like a big deal yeah. to us. And not because it's like, I don't live wrestling. This is something that I've been recently introduced to. It's not something that... Recently, like six years ago. Yeah, but I mean, I've not watched it all my life like yeah. you have. You watch Big Daddy and I watch and Big Haystacks. Daddy and Giant Haystacks and all that kind of stuff, yeah. But not... Re, you know, like religiously every weekend, uh, have yeah. figures and all that kind of stuff, like you did. But I really enjoy it. It's just entertainment for me, and it's like, like you say, it's like a a weekend thing where we, the whole day is devoted to just sitting and enjoying wrestling. And it's got to the point where I couldn't care less really, apart from the odd people. But that's not enough to make me devote five hours of my day. So. Yeah, so there were a bunch of people asking for refunds and booing. And then there was a video of Seth getting pissed off at a fan. Um, because he said, um, what was it? I don't know. I didn't You're booked this. bad or something like that. And Seth looked at him like he just said he was going to go kill his mom or something. And it's like the fact that Seth can't conceive of how people aren't going to like this. Unless they do a heel turn with him tonight, which I think is stupid, and a knee-jerk reaction, which is what they do. Um, but, like, the yeah, fact that no they one... They might be able to pull this back. This might be a huge, magically, like, conceived idea that's going to be amazing. Like the whole, like, Daniel gonna... Bryan thing? Yeah, it's like going to blow our big, minds. They're like, oh, this is our plan the whole time. Yeah. Like, wait for that. But at the minute, even if it does, then fair enough, we can change our minds. But at the minute, I'm over it. Yeah. So anyway, um, to save $10 a month, this is this is a sad day. What I wanted to do is I wanted to um, do this live because a lot of people talk about, um, people say online they're going to cancel and then they never do. So we're going to put our... Our mouth where our honey is. What's the saying? Money where our mouth is. Yeah, there you go. Um, we're going to go to my account. And the other thing was um, April 3rd, 2014. That was for WrestleMania that year, probably. Yeah. Okay, so check this out. Um, last night, there were a bunch of people who were trying to cancel their subscription and either um actually oh um this wasn't working and then what was the other thing that was happening no, I don't know. just wouldn't oh it, you, would, wouldn't you would you would go work. you would get, like you could have push on it or you would go to push on it and then um, said, sorry please try again later. yeah oh so that's it okay let's see before you go, if you cancel your subscription, 
your WWE access will end on October 15th. You're going to miss another Saudi show. No, I don't care. And Survivor Series. Um, just so you know, the Saudi shows have been awful. Notoriously awful. Just like wheeling out any geriatric wrestler they can and have them put on an awful show. Um, as a WWE sorry, you also get every WWP for you live. Thousands of every access. Oh, keep my subscription active. That That's in red. And so cancel is to cancel, not to cancel this page, right? No, it's to cancel. To cancel. No, you, thanks. You will lose access. <laughs> Uh, to continue watching all upcoming, like continue your subscription. No, no thanks. thanks. What? Subscription. Keep active. <laughs> it's still active. You have eight days remaining oh, to eight change days remaining. your mind. Yeah. So anyway, so that is how you um. It's sad. It is. I'm like bummed out. Like five years. That's the longest I've been subscribed to anything. I know. It is sad. And I, but, but we can all. You can always change your mind when they start improving again. But at the minute, yeah. I'm but over but it. the second they start improving, that's when they'll introduce their tier system. Yeah. Where it's nine ninety nine to watch um, Ride Along and Table for Three, but if you want to watch the pay per views, well, if they do that, that's they're not going to get our. If they do that, I'm gonna just. Put an eye patch on and talk like a pirate all day. Arr. Oh, pirate. Oh. oh. <laughs> Trying to be coy. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how you um that's how you vote with your wallet, people. Am I right? Yeah. I think we need to make a stand in this case. So it's By very, sitting down. Yeah, yeah. It's very sad. I know. But I, we'll I, be watching Wrestle Talk and finding out what's going on from then. I so. just can't wait to hear the um, report from the shareholders. I really hope. I hope it's like, up. oh my gosh, so I many people. I mean, they'll never tell us that properly, but. They'll but, have to in the shareholders meeting. Like, the, if, like they say what the percentage of s subscribers has gone up or down. I hope. I hope so many people have actually done it. Because if everyone did it who said they were going to do it on Twitter last night, um, dude, yeah, gonna that's going to be astronomical. I really hope they do. I hope because that's the only thing that Vince takes any notice of. Yeah, that you know? and blondes. Yeah, which don't deserve it Yeah, 99% of the time. Anyway, All right, so, that's depressing. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. Never have no in your heart. Life's a garden. Dig it. I hope that's it. Bye. Bye. <laughs>